Uh, we're now welcoming on a senior account executive with group ticket sales with the Chicago White Sox, Mr. Scott Gabor. Thank you very much for joining us, Scott. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Yeah, Ben, thanks. Pleasure to be here. So uh, getting into it, you're a U of I graduate. You graduated in 2006 with a degree in sports management. How did this education translate into a career in sales for you? Yeah, um, I mean, going to U of I um, in the sports, recreation, and tourism department, um, actually wasn't sure if I was going to go into that. And then I ended up liking a couple of my first classes and realized that I could kind of make a career in, in either sports or recreation at that point. Um, and uh, actually, when I had to do my internship to graduate, uh, considered both recreation jobs with different park districts and things uh, and sports jobs and ultimately decided to go on the sports side of things and work for the Chicago Sky uh, for my internship to graduate and uh, worked in the sales department there. Uh, it was fun. A lot of, lot of young people to, uh, to work with. So it was kind of like going into grad school right out of uh, college yeah. Um, and uh, definitely a fun place to, to work and, and learn kind of the corporate world, if you will. And then um, from there, that kind of transitioned to a job with the, um, the Chicago Wolves. Um, and from the Wolves, got an internship with the White Sox. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the, been there ever since. So, um, and yeah, I've been in the sales department at all those places and um, again, a lot of, a lot of fun, uh, times to be had working with a lot of, uh, uh, young folks getting right out of college and just kind of figuring out how to, um, navigate life after that. So, uh, been, been living in that world ever since. <laughs> awesome. So you've been with the Sox then for the last 14 years, what's really kept you committed to the White Sox and moving up internally within the ticket sales division? What's that process been like for you? Yeah, um, it's uh, definitely been a blast working for the White Sox. Uh, there couldn't be a better organization for, for me to be at. Um, I've been a White Sox fan my whole life, so that certainly helps in that regard. Um, my, I'm the, um, probably the favorite child out of uh, all my aunts, uncles, as well as my parents, so uh, that part helps. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been – just a lot of challenges here and there with just my um, my current job as well as the other jobs I've had and um, continuing to challenge myself as every year we're facing new things. Obviously, this year is a pandemic. Um, so a whole new uh, list of things to deal with and and navigate and, and learn from. So it seems like every year I've kind of learned something new and uh the White Sox have just been an awesome place to work. Great, great group of people to work with and, and collaborate with. So it's just, uh, um, it's been great for me. I, I, I'm not sure where my next steps lead me, but I, I'm still enjoying being with the White Sox. <laughs> so obviously, speaking of the pandemic, it's been an issue for everyone this year. How has uh, the ticket sales office really responded to the pandemic? And is your work-life uh, balance, is it significantly different obviously with the pandemic now and just is there optimism within the ticket sales department moving into the 2021 season yeah i mean um we definitely haven't stopped staying in contact with people mm -hmm. we've been very proactive with staying out there and being like hey we're gonna have baseball back at some point so make sure you're you're ready to go mm -hmm. get everything organized on your end we don't want to be scrambling once they give us the green light because once uh, we do get the green light, everybody who said, oh, call me when the you're letting fans back in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I'll do that. But it's you're going to be far further down in the line um, to get yourself situated if you do wait. So still trying to create that urgency has been um, challenging at times when people are like, well, we don't know if you're going to have fans in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we were a playoff team last year, which we we're able to capitalize on. Um, so having that certainly helps. And, you know, we are going to do our best to get baseball back if they allow us here. Gotcha. So being in uh, group ticket sales is obviously a little different, but what makes uh, the group ticket sales different from 
selling to individual fans, families, and what's it like developing the relationships with current and potential customers? Um, there's a lot more logistics involved with group events as opposed to individual. Um, certainly there's people that call in that it's just them and their family and they have questions about getting into the ballpark mm-hmm. and things like that. But um, groups, uh, there could be any number of things that they need to coordinate with, whether if it's a work function, they might need to have some sort of space to meet beforehand and want to know what logistics go into that before they plan. Um, and then going into like larger events, there could be like redemptions for items that are included with the special promotion um, that, that involves uh, multiple departments um, with that. Um, and yeah, it, it just a lot more details uh, having to stick to a schedule. It's uh, a lot of times it can be like planning a wedding or uh, some sort of uh, party at, at mm-hmm. U of I, you need to um, uh, make sure you have a timeline of when invitations are going out, um, when people have to give their RSVP by and um, confirm final group numbers and things like that. So um, there's definitely a lot more details and you got to stick to a schedule of reminding people when they got to get you different things um, so that we know what we need on our end as far as like food and beverage goes and things like that too. So um, there, there's a whole different list of things that you can uh, go into with the logistics on all that. Gotcha. Gotcha. So in your 14 years with the Sox, how have you really seen the ticket sales industry evolve over time? I mean, across baseball as a whole and with the White Sox. Yeah, it's, um, it's been crazy how much it's changed. Like, uh, I think the, the biggest thing is mobile ticketing. Um, like no teams are, or any industry is really printing tickets mm-hmm. anymore for the most part, unless it's at a box office window outside the stadium. And even that's going to start going away too. But, um, uh, the amount of information you can get where you kind of know, everybody who's coming into the ballpark now is, is definitely going to benefit us moving forward and just all industries across the board. Like, for example, like I I could sell a group to somebody for 300 tickets and I may only know one or two people in that group that come out and that might be the only people we have record of in our system. Mm -hmm. But as we transfer more to, to mobile ticketing um, that's, 300 new people that you have a chance to have a conversation with that uh, one, they didn't know you existed to help this person organize the group. And um, two, I didn't know that who they were. So um, being able to connect with them and just have a conversation, let them know what kind of a resource I can be to them is uh, kind of the main thing with my job right now is letting people know that I'm here to be of service to them if they need help with anything. Um, but, uh, but yeah, mobile ticketing has been probably the biggest thing. Um, it feels like when I first started with the white Sox in 2007, we were still like printing things out on, on paper to take notes on stuff. Now everything's on a computer. So, um, yeah, it, it, we're in the digital age and now also social selling is kind of a bigger thing where, um, you do a lot more to get involved on Facebook and Twitter and, Instagram and everything really where you post a picture of a U of I white Sox hat mm-hmm. and tell people to come out and they share it to their friends and everything and really putting more into the consumer's hand um, to help promote events has uh, been kind of key with social media as well. Awesome. So you obviously kind of touched on it with that answer, but what do you see as the next big developments in ticket sales and are there any technology specifically other than the mobile ticketing that you think will be really influential moving forward in ticket sales? Um, it, it will be interesting what happens next as far as ticketing goes, because I, I was on a call a few months ago where um, uh, this guy who works from one of the bigger ticketing distribution companies talking about how um, you might be able to use like your handprint or your fingerprint as your access into an event moving forward. So it'll be interesting what happens with that. Um, I, I don't know. That seems a little bit crazy for me, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, 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 that'll be interesting to see if that's something that, that uh, comes to fruition a little bit more. Um, but uh, 
yeah, the mobile ticketing, I think, is still a little bit in its infancy. Mm-hmm. So I do think that there's still a long way to go with that as well and how we're able to track different things in the ballpark uh, as well as using your phone for purchases in the ballpark too. So um, getting a better idea of what people are actually consuming in the ballpark um, is going to educate people a lot more too. Awesome. So then just uh, to wrap things up for us, do you have any advice to any students or anyone really attending the conference interested in a career of sports business, any advice to uh, just start their journey? Yeah, I would say um, definitely get active on LinkedIn. Um, I know in the past, some of uh, uh, the things I've done like this, uh, some of the students reached out to me on LinkedIn and I'm happy to be helpful in any way possible Mm -hmm. I can. Um, And definitely get active on LinkedIn and and, uh, find groups um, in different businesses that uh, interest you so you can get a little bit of knowledge on that. Um, And just get experience. Like uh, the education at U of I is awesome. Um, It's a great place to learn how to be a member of a community and um, uh, contribute as a a person of society. Um, But going into the workforce, uh, the best thing you can do is have some sort of experience with um, the industry that you're looking to get into. Like I, I did Bears game day um, event staff while I was at U of I. And that kind of, uh, made me realize more that, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that go into hosting events and a lot of jobs to be had, um, to be part of that. So, um, that's where I kind of got more of my interest from was doing that. Um, in addition to everything at U of I, but, um, uh, would try to work for the, the athletics department if possible, get, get some experience making calls to people, um, I think, uh, it's an underrated, um, skill, just being able to have a conversation, um, on the phone with somebody. And, uh, it's definitely not something that I had when I started at U of I, but, uh, learned quickly after, uh, leaving U of I. <laughs> awesome. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, there's Mr. Scott Gabor from the Chicago White Sox. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you guys. Go Illini. <laughs>